Welcome back to Sunless Sky. In the last episode, we made our way to the Eleutheria Transit Relay. Since I am going to Eleutheria until the Wayfair update comes out, that's going to change all of Albion. Before I go through, though, let's go ahead and level up. I'm going to choose a seasoned smuggler. You've carried contraband from one corner of the sky to the other. You are the bane of the revenue men. You unlock this by completing smuggling prospects. You've carried starlight and forbidden books and honey that opens the heart like a key in a lock. When novice of the sky roads asked you what virtue a smuggler needs, what did you answer? Elizabeth answered, caution. Be watchful, be judicious, dump contraband rather than risk capture. The most successful smuggler is the one nobody has heard of. And then I wrote a little bit in Elizabeth's character sheet. Uh, I never would have stood a chance if the blind bruiser hadn't taught me. I'll do the same for anyone who needs my help. By the way, when I loaded back into the game, I actually ended up at Hybris. Which, I, I mean, I think it only mean that the game actually does not save at relays. Which is pretty important and unexpected. Because, I mean, I know technically it's not a port. It's a relay, but I mean, you dock, you dock into it. You dock into it. It looks exactly the same as any other port. Feels like it really should save. It's quite odd. But anyway, that was no big deal. Just took like 30 seconds to get over here. Okay. Uh, oh, I think I have to undock and redock. Yeah, so first thing I'm going to do is buy a travel permit. Or, well, acquire a travel permit, rather. This is why I bought three Ministry Approved Literature. With that, plus two Visions of the Heavens, I can skip out on paying the 800 sovereign fee. The superintendent is bored. Give him something inspiring and something good to read to make his deployment pass more quickly. A gap-toothed smile. The officer buries his nose in a book, only recalling his side of the bargain when you cough, twice, meaningfully. I'm so sorry. Forget my manners. Don't get much company here. And I have another three weeks left. He passes you an ornately marked vellum scroll sealed with the Eagle's Empyrean emblem. It might look nice, but they don't fit in my filing cabinet. Blue and Empyrean show-offs. He apparently feels no need to be polite about London's once ally even though it was Empyrean technology that helped open the door to the heavens. Oh, that's interesting. So the Empyrean, like, Empire? Does it say Empire somewhere? Well, anyway, Empyrean was once London's ally, but no longer. They helped open the doors. I, hmm. I wonder what happened to them. I'm trying to remember if there was any mention of Empyrean in Sunless Seas. I mean, there probably was, but I don't remember. It's been so many years. Okay, now there's two ways to travel to Eleutheria. Why is this red? Oh, I have to present myself to customs. Right. Whew, thought I forgot something. I'm going to have to go back to New Winchester. I have no contraband, nothing to declare. And here we go. Yeah, you can either travel to Eleutheria with a couple caddies of dried tea plus the permit or one Savage Secret plus the permit. Savage Secret is way better for me. I have so many of them. Be warned, you may not be able to return from Eleutheria for some time. Yep, I have as much with me as I could take from the last place that I resupplied at, the circus. Let's go. The workers here suffer from unremitting tedium. Relieve their ennui and they'll send you on your way. The superintendent listens attentively, even takes notes. He has no intention of forgetting the slightest detail when recounting it to his subordinates. When you're done, he's almost friendly, going so far as to walk you back to your locomotive. You're barely aboard when the hour looms start up. The machinery grinds and stirs, the steam vents. The sigils of the edifice burn with sullen fire. A force like a great hand seizes your engine. I 
I'm so excited for what Eletheria is going to look like, what it's going to have. I have no idea. You, know, you sort of get a feel for a place after you go there for the first, the first time. So it's really exciting. Like, what's the general feel of Eletheria? Well, right now it looks spooky as hell. Yeah, remember the, like, it's a tip or something. I guess it's not a tip, just like a, a tidbit of information that it said in one of the loading screens that I mentioned a while ago about how the Eleutheria, Eleutheria's son has chosen to plunge the place into darkness. It's chosen to not spread its, its judgment, its light. Okay, how big is this place compared to the other places like the Reach? Eleutheria, is it about the same size right there? Actually, it looks exactly the same size. See where my mouse is? The reach ends right there. That's the diameter. And this one's the same. Damn, the Blue Kingdom's tiny. Wow. And Albion was the biggest, yeah. This place is so spooky. It's like a foggy graveyard, something from a horror movie. Oh, there's like guttural chanting in the music. That is cool. Okay, uh, well, I need to find Pan, the central hub. That should be the first place I go. It's probably in the center. New Winchester and London have been in the center, so let's head to the center. Here, countless rogues and outcasts have arrived in Eltheria's encompassing dark. Whoa. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's called a griever. And it just exploded trying to kill me. A griever defeated. Several globs of griever remain. They continue to spew livid ichor in the sky. Can decipher the sigils in its bones or dig in its throat? Ugh. This will trade visions of the heavens for a moment of inspiration and experience. That's a good trade. And this is to gain sovereigns. Oh, you trade five vision of the heavens. That's actually quite a lot. I don't need any moments of inspiration. Let's go with digging its throat. Might something of value have been caught in its gullet? Do you have the gumption to look? The better your iron, the more you may find. 50 sovereigns. Gifts in the gullet. A crewman holds the mouth open for you. You endure the meat stink and the gelatinous saliva and the bile bubbles for as long as you can, digging gem shards and glittering relic fragments from the flesh. You. There's so many layers to the creepiness. Oh, I think I can spot stars. I think I'm seeing stars through this little patch right here, like through all the clouds and fog. Do you see it right there? Oh yeah, I should be uh, using my cavy. I should be scouting. Oh yeah, I see a lot of stars there. What is that? That's that's not even on the legend. What the heck? Uh, it's a picture of a moon. Um. I'm so intrigued. I, I'm going to turn around and go to it. I have the supplies and everything. Should be fine. But yeah, I love this contrast here. This creepy darkness and the little patches of light. How can something not be on the legend? I can't like... Th this is the entire legend, right? Yeah. Yeah.
surely that won't be the sun that's chosen to become, well, not bright anymore. <laughs> wouldn't be right next to the relay, would it? For many, this is the first they see of Eleutheria. Murmuring groves, uh, missed the rest of it. I also might have just read that, I'm not sure. Oh. Whew. I can repair my hole. Strip its hide to repair your hole. The largest gobbet is still half covered in stiff, knobbled hide. It's probably sturdy enough to patch some fractured plating. Nine hole. Its hide is wrinkled, the texture of baked elephant skin, and grimy with detritus accumulated during the griever's long sleep. The creature must be centuries, even millennia old. You flay the hide off and stretch it over the cracks in your hole. That should do the trick. Let's go grab this real quick. The Lazar. Let's strip her for repairs, yeah. Back to Max. Oh. Wait, what? Why's the moon symbol gone? I don't understand. Oh, that's the end of the map. I don't understand. What did that symbol mean? Surely it wasn't a symbol for the Griever, right? Enemies like that wouldn't get marked on the map. Weird. I love all the fires all around. Little beacons to help you navigate, I guess. Lights down there. You can see structures too. Little fires in the distance. We've got a long way to go till the center. And unlike Albion, Eletheria doesn't seem like a place of uh, little terrain where you can kind of just go straight. A lot of plant life on this thing here. So hazy. Yeah, wow. Haven't seen those before. The Peril Ennis. Oh, signal the wreck. That might give me supplies. That would be great. Yes, one supply. Thank you. Oh, shit. cabin. Oh hey, that was actually called a Reach Marauder, even though we're not in the Reach. Surprising. I guess they came through, so they're still considered a Reach Marauder. They came through the relay. That's a scary noise. There's another thing! Music is so good. Look at that. Is that just water? Whoa, 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 whoa. Candlewind? I think it's a candlewind. Yeah, I guess that's water. I can see it reflecting 
clouds up above or something. It looks really cool. Smoke rises from a cave ahead. Eh. Eh. A blind hermitage. A single candle burns in the cave entrance. Not to offer light, but to deepen the darkness beyond. The hermit's puckered skin is a mass of fungal blooms in the purple-leafed flowers of twilight. They tend to them with a sliver of obsidian, delicately carving weeds from their flesh. Uh. Um. Oh, I can observe them. This will give you an Eleutherian mystery. What is that? Trade supplies. Definitely not going to do that. Whisper secrets. Exchange your secrets for a condemned experiment and an Eleutherian mystery. Let's do that one. It's going to take three savage secrets. Their secrets for yours. A fair trade. I gain terror. The hermit cuts a purple flower from their shoulder, licking the blood from the stem. They wrap it tight and place it in an old chipped cup full of gathered rainwater, stirring with the obsidian shard until it runs dark. They offer it. There's no refusing. When you wake up, only blessed fragments of nightmare remain. Burning at their core is an eye, the same one you now see repeated again and again in the hermit's garden of flesh. Condemned experiment and an Eleutherian mystery. What exactly is that? Oh, it's in miscellaneous under possessions. A secret of Eleutheria valued by the powers in Pan. Huh. Oh. Oh, are we, uh, we're not above 50%, but this isn't, this isn't a crew terror event. This is just a me event. Ah, uh, oh, this is the dream where there's blazing gold everywhere. It's crowded with suns. Once again, we're going to seek company from the Incognito Princess. Ah, failure. They had the same dream, too. Flickering fires in the night signify the onset of the candle when your cook trouble bolts the galley door. Oh, that's a dead end. Uh. Mm mm. Mm mm mm. Yeah, something about this water doesn't look right. I'm not sure, I'm not really sure it is water. Looks like it's kind of like bubbling and burbling and filled with weird, it almost looks like an acid bath or something. I don't think you'd want to swim in it. Prove lower their voices, no one speaks louder than a whisper. Be wary, Captain Grievers. Something, something, linger here. So this is where the night symbol was. Once again, it's gone, and this is around where they mentioned the Grievers. Could it have something to do with the Grievers, then? Uh oh. Oops. Oof, Jesus. Did that hurt me? It actually didn't, surprisingly. Something is spotting me from over here. Oh, another one. Uh, examine the innards. Even in its last moments, it spasms violently, but the light touches it, but why? Oh, so these things thrive in the dark. They wouldn't be able to live in the light. The Devourers of Distance. It's the bones that catch your attention, specifically their marrow. A sigil is imprinted on it. Splitting a bone, 
you extract and slice the marrow. Every inch, you find a different sigil. Something has been written in the griever's bones. That's creepy as hell. Decipher the sigils in its bones. Hmm. Yeah, so that's going to cost the five visions of the heavens, but I'm going to do it just because I'm curious what it says. The griever's marrow is laced with symbols. You've seen enough of the sky's wonders to attempt a rough translation. The griever's are not one of Mr. Darwin's cosmic accidents. They were made. The sigils, you believe, describe their purpose and their place. You identify a symbol of consumption, another of duty or responsibility, another of violation. As best as you can tell, when the laws of distance were broken, when there existed places that should not be, the grievers were sent to correct the situation. So their purpose is basically to fix things being out of place. Hold on, I'm going to go to my document where I wrote down the three different, uh, they used a term for it, constellations, the three constellations of suns, I think it was. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, the conjunctions. Yeah, so the chrysanthemum conjunctions are concerned with inception, with beginnings and newness, that has nothing to do with this. Hmm. Amaranthine conjunction, their culmination, bringing things to completion, that's not it. Nepenthine conjunction advocates separation, distinction, isolation, the raising of barriers, and the drawing of borders. That could be related. Distinction, isolation, barriers, borders, that's all about like distance and where things are. I wonder if these devourers were made by the sun in Eleutheria. And if that sun is part of the, uh, that conjunction. Oh, hey. Amaranthine ruins. Amaranthine ruins. Hold on. Okay, I forgot the name of the conjunctions. I'm going back to the document. <laughs> yeah, so the whole distance thing made it sound like it was the Nepenthine conjunction. But the Amaranthine Conjunction, they're the ones that believe in culmination and bringing things to completion. Amaranthine Conjunction. And this is the Amaranthine Ruins right next to it. So, hmm. That's a bit of a hint, I think, that it's that conjunction, Amaranthine. More Grievers? Pan should be close, I hope. I mean, who knows, there could be, like maybe in Eleutheria, the hub area is not in the center. She tries to put a brave face on it, but even your aunt is harrowed by the growing tension. You can smell the sherry on her breath. Well, the music certainly changed. It sounds quite nice and it's peaceful. The sound of crickets. Can you hear the pipes, Captain? Crewman asks, their eyes bright. Pan's a calling. Ah, there it is. Or, oh no, that's one of the outlaying relays. Should I stop there before going to Pan? I mean, sure, why not? Winters reside. The hour in Pan. Clocks are not welcome in Pan. Instead, the musical piping that emits from the adamant idol dictates the time. The devils of the Brazen Brigade interpret it and inform the city of the current hour and the activities associated with it. An hour may be of any duration. The longest one on record lasted a month, and they occur in no fixed order. A wise captain heeds the hour before setting foot in pan. That's fascinating. 
it's the hour of leaving when thoughts turn to far off places. To the stars. Sometimes the idol's piping is rhythmic and stirring. This is the hour of leaving when wanderlust sweeps the city like a sudden plague. Recruiting crew at Pan is temporarily more effective. Huh. A single street cuts through the groves. It's ha it houses an immaculate copy of London architecture. Three of the revolutionaries governing Calendar Council live here. February, January, and ineffable December. Right, the Calendar Council. We had to do something with them. About the... The meeting that we overheard, and the aunt and all that stuff. No, they don't have any shops here. Oh, this is a... Uh, this is one of the smuggling places, right? Corn Crake House. The Georgian house is three stories high with silhouettes at every window. Some pace, others gesticulate, others have their heads close, perhaps conspiring. The building is rammed to the gun walls with the revolutionaries. Light pours from the open front doors. The doorwoman is slight and no real obstacle, but a continuous trickle of revolutionaries passes her, some burlier than your strongest stoker. If she wanted to refuse entry, she'd be able to enforce it. So I can't do anything with them right now. You must become closer to the revolutionaries. That's fair. Still not sure what they're revolutionary about? A solitary cobbled street. The street nestles amidst the ruins and trees of Pan, one end abutting an overgrown grove. Revolutionaries with secateurs wage continual war rebuffing vines attempting to claim the cobbles. The Georgian houses are well kept and cleaner than they ever were in London, but only one is lit up. It's the focus of the activity here. Outside it, revolutionaries trade, compare wounds, and practice tirades. Their home here offers them solace and restoration before the next battle. Negotiate for a captivating treasure. Whoa, I have the stuff to do that? I need two crew, five otherworldly artifacts, I've got that. 33 whole, why do I need that? Two sky stories, two salon stewed gossip, need at least five iron, <laughs> that's a really low requirement. Need to have not done any special service for the calendar council. And at least five hearts. Oh god, this will cost a point of hearts and iron, among other things. Were you initiated into Winter's Reside, the price would be less painful. Oh, well, pff, let's not do that then. Just yet. Yeah, I don't want to permanently lose stats. Let's mingle. They can speak freely here. They could. Uh, this could gain you a savage secret or a sky story and a tale of terror. Wild ambitions filled with hope and fury. You follow the xenophilic youth to a small stall selling pasties. He buys you one. While you eat, narrowly avoiding burning your mouth, the boy running the stall tells you of the latest escapades of his favorite revolutionary captain. Seems he has quite the crush. Sky Story and the Tale of Terror. Exchange Eleutherian Mysteries for a Vision of the Heavens. Sure. Just to see if that maybe helps initiate me into, you know, learning more about these people? I'm not sure. Let's try it. The xenophilic youth has requested that visiting captains bring him news of Eleutheria. Exchange Eleutherian mysteries for a vision of the heavens. What exactly does xenophilic mean? I mean, xeno... Ah, yeah. It's basically the opposite of xenophobic. Means an affection for unknown or foreign objects, manners, cultures, or people. Yeah. Okay, I'm starting to like these people already, if that represents the, uh, like, the ideals of the revolutionaries. Fond fascination. At first glance, the youth might seem too reserved to properly belong here, but ask about his passions and he is voluble. He shares a tale from a revolutionary who has journeyed as far as the Reach. 
She spoke of wind like dragon's breath, and warned of stars like eyes that shifted to follow as her locomotive traveled. A wind like dragon's breath, would that be the candle wind, or...? There was another type of wind in the reach, the uh, peacock wind. But like dragon's breath, dragon's breath suggests heat, which I think the candle wind, given the name, would probably be warm. Okay, seems to be all I can do for right now. Um, oh, accept an offer to join the revolutionaries. You will need to perform an errand for the calendar council. But this is highlighted, like I've already done it? Have I? Can't have a friend to the heart catchers? I need three yellow three mysteries, which I have zero now, so obviously I can't do that. This will prevent you from joining the other factions at Pan. Okay, well, that's intriguing. What are the other factions? I think that's all I can do here. Yeah, let's find Pan proper. The binding tables. Oh. oh it's another station. You know what, I, hmm, I don't actually trust the game to save at that station. I don't trust it to save at anything that isn't like a full-fledged station. And I want to end the episode soon, so I'm actually not going to go there. The Cypress King's Grove. Whoa, what is that in the center? Oh, that's the thing we saw in the distance. That huge, terrifying statue. So many moons. I'm not sure why my cavy isn't finding the station. Maybe this is Pan. Maybe Pan is just a bunch of little places to dock? Could be. Maybe each faction has its own place? I don't know, there's gotta be somewhere around here that sells stuff, though. Yeah, there's another one, so there's three so far. The Brazen Brigade, that sounds like one of the factions. I'm just gonna check it real fast. See if they sell anything here. No, they also don't sell anything. There's gotta be a proper pan, right? Maybe? God, there might not be. I'm getting real scared then, because my supplies are pretty low. I'm gonna stop using my cavy. Oh, oh, that's it! Ah, thank god. Oh my god, I can already tell I want this person so bad to join my crew. Uh, okay, but let's save this for another episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to explore Pan and the surrounding factions.